Hello, my fellow patriots. This is Alex with Disabled Vets Perspective, and I just wanted to come on and talk a little bit about last night. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Well, it wasn't very good for anybody. A lot of things were exposed last night. A lot of things we were warned about, but you see them all happening, and you're like, yeah, well, we knew it was coming, but it still kind of pisses you off. Well, this morning, after some of the dust has settled, I've been able to analyze a little bit of where we are as a uh, struggling republic. And I mean it, we're struggling. It's going to be still going to be an effort to keep this thing. And uh, last night showed us that there's still an enormous amount of control in the deep state and that they, they still hold a lot of the cards when it comes to uh, how our system works who is actually in charge of our system and you know how they're going to manipulate it so that they can keep the power that they've been trying to get uh, this everything was planned but uh, if you think about it we were supposed to have Hitlery and we were supposed to have the last destruction of the country by you know their wars and whatever campaigns they had to do to turn us over to other countries to take away our freedoms to weaken us so that we can be absorbed into the new world order and controlled by whoever they chose to be the the leader of that new world order but we kind of threw a stick in their spokes and we, they flipped head over the handlebars when that happened they lost four years of their goal and their goal was to be in a position of uh, complete and total destruction by the year 2021 because agenda 2020 or agenda 21 rather was the plan everything was supposed to be destroyed and in its weakest state by 2021 that way they had nine years before Agenda 2030 to get everything back in order under their new rule and their new new world order. Well, we screwed that up for them and that, that pissed them off. So they sort of accelerated what they've been doing over the last four years, trying to get Trump out of the way and moving around in the background to still position their pieces. Uh, the liberal states are good examples of that. They're still trying to destroy their own states so that they can weaken their economies and, you know, once a place is bankrupt, then they can go to whoever they have to for help to get that, to recover from that bankruptcy, including foreign entities, because, you know, they don't give a shit what the federal government says. They don't listen to them anyway, so they would just call in their UN sources and they would call in their foreign nations to come and buy up the property that they destroyed so that they could rebuild their own infrastructure. Uh, I think that's a lot of what was going on with these cities that are being destroyed. I think that property was probably already promised to, for, for example, China. And they just, they needed to get all the riffraff out of the way so China could come in and build. I'm using China. I don't know who it is exactly, but they could come in and build whatever they wanted on the property they were promised. So I think that's what that's what's behind that. But another thing to think about is I've kind of always said this, you got to question everything. You have to question everything. I look at everything and then I put things together just using logic and one example is the 17th letter of the alphabet. If you say the actual word, then your video will just get flagged. But if you follow the 17th letter of the alphabet, you'll know that there have been things that have been said, like uh, all elections after 2018 are secure, and uh, you know trust the plan, do all these things. And there was a lot of question on if that was a, a PSYOP, and just to just keep the masses from doing anything stupid. 
And as you look at how things are going right now, I hope you are questioning that. If this has been the, the most incredible pacification ever implemented in society to keep what essentially is the largest standing army in the universe from rising up against you while you're moving things into position. Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't have an opinion either way on that one. <clears throat> I have my personal feelings about it. I question it. I, I don't blindly follow anything, so I listen to what is said. I pay attention. I look at how other people are potentially reacting to it, and then and I can come up with stuff. But I, I tend to think that there is a pacification process going on. I do believe that there is a very conscious effort to keep the, keep the patriots in their seats and in front of the TV with their potato chips and sodas. So I've seen that for quite a while because they know once the Patriots have had enough, there's nothing that can stand up against them. The, the largest army in the world is in China, and we as civilian citizen armed militia outnumber them probably 10 to 1. So there's nobody that will stand up against us when we have decided there's just enough. That time's coming close. But I think if you look, you'll notice that the election count has stopped. And apparently it stopped because it wasn't going in the right direction. So there have been filings put forward to go into court. So they're going to stop the count. Not going to count anymore. They're just going to take it to court because they've already lost to the president. And if they continue counting, then they have to call the state. So they're going to, they've stopped the vote, and now they're going to go to court and try to get the courts to make the decision for them. That's not to stop the president. They already know he won. It's to delay the vote. It's to hopefully get it past the 20th of January so that they can flop the pig Losi in there so that she can make some quick changes real quick regardless of who goes in i'm sure they've already got bills written that would limit the power of the president to the point where he would be nothing more than a um, cheerleader for the football team but if she gets in there they can fire those bills over her desk real quick sign her she signs her name to them and then gets out of the way when they say oh yeah it looks like the president won then when he gets in there, he has no power. He can't do anything. He can simply possess the seat behind the desk, and that's it. That's what I think they're putting together. And you might think something different, and always, if you have another opinion, I would love to hear it in the, in the chat, because this is all about interaction. It's not just about me. But, all right, so the next thing I want to talk about here is the... The election, as it, as some of it has been finalized last night. Uh, if you live in Florida, uh, I think you'll be hopefully happy to hear that the number th amendment number three passed, which means that if you are a constitutionalist like I am, you don't have to wear an R on your voter card in order to vote in primaries, because. If you guys know me, you know that I can't stand the party system. The whole thing is illegal. It was never meant to be. So having to wear an R on my voter card really pisses me off. But I had to do it in order to vote in primaries. So I will be getting that changed. I'm going back to my independent, unfortunately, because they don't have a, a tag for constitutionalist, which they should. But I'll be independent again. I will not be a party affiliate. That way I won't be a hypocrite when I say that I can't stand either party. And they say, oh, well, let me see your voter card. Uh, it's right here. Sorry. Nope. Get the R out of my head. 
get the eye on there and go back to being a American. I don't need to be a Republican or a Democrat. I'm an American. America. So, that was a good one. And also, some of the uh, federal deal, it looks like we have picked up uh, 10 seats in the Senate. And uh, that's a good thing because it doesn't matter who wins, who decides who they've selected, not elected, if it's President Trump, if it's Joe Biden, it won't matter. Because if it's Joe Biden, we have the Senate. The conservatives kept the Senate. They actually took a much bigger lead. So the House is going to try to pass some stupid bills. They'll go through the House with all their majority and Nancy Piglosi still in the seat, which I just can't believe when the person running against her had such a massive lead, but that's none of my business. But they'll pass the bills, they'll send them through to the Senate with a big smile on their face, and the Senate will go, <laughs> and it won't go anywhere, so it can't go to the president's desk to be signed, and therefore, it'll be very difficult for them to take your rights away. When you hear that the Senate is the key it really is the key. It's the one that really has the control because nothing goes to the president if it hasn't gone through the Senate. And if nothing goes to the president, there's nothing to sign. That makes the Senate a pretty powerful entity. But there again, you have the, uh, I've got a phone, I've got a pen, and that kind of garbage. But I'm not a big fan of executive orders either, because they were supposed to be used very sparingly, and to my knowledge, they were only supposed to be used during uh, periods of unrest and instability within the government. I guess I could use that as an excuse every time, but I'm not a fan of them. Because there is a legislative process that gets ignored when executive orders are signed. And then they call them laws, which defies the whole premise of the Constitution. They, they can't be laws because they haven't gone through the uh, process with the chambers and the House and the Senate. They haven't been passed and they haven't been signed into law. So you can't call something a law that hasn't gone through a legal process. You can call it an edict. And those are merely suggestions. And usually... A executive order is intended to control the groups within that organization. So an executive order is not, not supposed to be used to control the people. It's used to be it's used to control the the members within the cabinet or the government. They're supposed to be to control the activity of the government. But no, they use them to write laws, which is wrong. So you've got that going for you. But the Senate really is the key. And uh, we want President Trump to have another set of years to try to finish this thing off. I'm not real, not real cool about what's going on with our justice system. It's still pretty much an injustice system. Unless you're, of course, a uh, Democrat, then there's never any justice. They just, they go break laws with impunity. So uh, our justice system needs to be fixed. Gen uh, Attorney General Barr needs to be adjusted. Uh, a lot of these people need to be put in check. Pete said it this morning, fire everybody. And that's where I stand, fire everybody. Em empty the cabinet start over. If you want to hire somebody back, if they've done a specifically decent job, hire them back. But to start, it needs to be absolutely empty. Nothing but echoes when you talk into the room. And then rebuild this thing and vet these people. Look at their history. Look at their things that they've done in the past. And if there's anything that even looks questionable say nope next i want to keep interviewing until i find somebody better 
otherwise this all continues and we don't need that we need this we need a fix and supposedly there's 180,000 or more sealed indictments and if this uh, voter fraud is proven to be used to swipe the election of this country I think that every every single one of those indictments needs to be dumped on the floor like 52 pickup and just start snatching envelopes open and say okay got this one this one this one this one and pick these bastards up because if we allow the criminals to move forward with an illegal coup against the president then we're all in danger we all will lose uh, Kamala Harris has said that herself she said she's coming for us well I would like to see that wide hip bitch try to do something over here because I don't play I'm not I'm not going to give up what I signed up and fought for in this country it just doesn't happen that way I'm a law-abiding citizen but even law-abiding citizens have limits when you when the laws become tyrannical to the point where you will, you can't function as a human being then there's no need to be lawful anymore because you can't there's nothing you can do that's lawful anymore because everything is designed to make you a criminal so a lot going on and i hope you guys joined us last night on peach channel because it was it was fascinating we all had different news companies opened and we were watching their stats and none of them lined up the, the thing looks like absolute controlled chaos um i'm sure it was not an accident they do everything coordinatingly the uh they wanted it to look absolutely chaotic so that nobody could focus on it and that uh you basically when everybody just kind of goes then they ignore it they go away they just stop watching it because they they get so overwhelmed by uh, multiples of misinformation that they can't can't focus anymore not an accident every single part of this is coordinated they know what they're doing and uh, we just have to stay stay calm realize that the uh, with the Senate being a roadblock between the house and the president then uh, craziness can be blocked as long as the Democrats or as long as excuse me the as long as the Republicans and the conservatives can stand their ground and actually grow a set of balls and push back then they can put a stop to the overtake of this country but if they get bought like many of them have that's when we have to figure it out but I think that's probably enough information right now I know I can get long-winded and put out too much and then it ends up becoming sensory overload so uh, I think I'm gonna leave it at that but just everybody needs to stay calm realize that there is a roadblock that is in our favor still called the Senate and it'll be hard for them to push through craziness with that kind of a roadblock not to mention the fact that we're we're a little more stable in the Supreme Court so uh, you know just relax let this thing play out they're gonna go to court they're gonna do all this crap and I think that we're still gonna have President Trump for four years so uh, it's just got to be a matter of paperwork to get that done and again if the Patriots are ever needed I don't think there's gonna be any hesitation for the Patriots to do what they have to do but right now it's still the calm while they figure out the storm we'll know when it's time the signs will be all over the place and you know at that point you do what you have to do all right y'all make sure you leave a comment you know share some of this with me if you guys have something that you saw that i didn't see or if you have opinion about something that i'm talking about that you think is different i i want to hear it i want to get in get you guys involved with the conversation and uh we can all figure this out together uh i just throw things out there i want other people to think and come up with their own things and then we all come together and say okay well what do we figure is in the middle but that's how things work anyway like what i had to say make sure you tell your friends about me have them subscribe to my channel because my channel doesn't exist on youtube uh, you know 
whatever you guys do to get my my shows out there is pretty much the limits of it uh, youtube does nothing but um uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up on the way out and i i end it the same every time y'all stay in the pipe